Welcome to Dave's Garage, and today we are doing a 6 volt to 12 volt conversion on the 74 Kawasaki G5 that is right behind us. So we're going to be going over the hows, the whys, the benefits, and everything to know about a 6 volt to 12 volt conversion. And we'll be using this bike as a test bed. So I'll show you how to actually do it once we go over the background, the theoretical part, and we'll actually apply it. So first question to understand the six volt system is just why was it even used in the first place, right? It kind of seems very antiquated and that's because it is. Well, back in the day, you didn't really have too much space. And that's pretty much the big reason is space considerations. Basic lead acid batteries, you didn't have enough space on a tiny little motorcycle like this to fit enough cells to generate 12 volts. And the other issue is just just the requirements at the time. We're not running EFI, we're running a very dim headlight, 25 watt, six volt, pretty much a candle. We're running just a headlight, turn signals, a horn, and a taillight, and then ignition. We're not running a whole lot. This does not also have an electric starter as well. So kind of, is it still usable? Yes, but you're gonna run into issues. Really, is the issue is just parts availability. If something goes wrong, can't even find parts to replace them. And now I'm running into that answer of no, no. The main issue with this is the headlight. You, Kawasaki obviously does not make an original headlight anymore. You cannot find a replacement. There's no aftermarket six volt, 25 watt, five inch headlight. It just doesn't exist. It's unobtainium. And the people that have them on eBay, they know what they're worth because there's probably like only like five of them that still work and they cost a pretty penny. For the cost of a single working headlight, we can do an entire 12 volt conversion and have a working headlight that's brighter and more reliable. So is it still, still usable? I'd argue no. So that kind of brings us into you know the benefits, right? You can go into any hardware store, any parts store, and you'll be able to find 12 volt headlights, lights, turn signals, anything. And guess what? It's cheap because there's a ton of it. The lights you can get are brighter. You have more options. And because of sixth grade science, you have this formula here of voltage times amps equals watts. You can figure out that, hey, when you run a six volt system and it has 35, that's a three, 35 watts of output, you can figure out that you're running about six amps of current, right? That's a, about, I know that's not exactly six. That's a lot of heat generated and honestly, a lot of waste. However, if you have a 12 volt system, you can figure out that you're running about three amps. So all of a sudden you can just run more stuff more efficiently through the same wires, just by switching to 12 volts at the same power. Pretty impressive. And then the question is, can you use the original wiring? And the answer is yes, because it's all meant to handle more current than what you're gonna be passing through it. What do you actually need for a 12 volt conversion? Well, you need every single little bit that runs on six volts. Every single bulb you can think of, you know, headlights, a flasher, you need the voltage regulator, rectifier. You also need a new horn and if there's any other accessories that are on the bike that run in six volts. The good thing is that a lot of these things are cheap. So it's not a whole lot of effort to actually replace. And so that brings us to how do we do it? To help accomplish this goal, I've come up with a plan and that includes drawing out the complete lighting and charge circuit to actually see what I'm doing. Here we have the simplified wiring diagram for the Kawasaki G5 but a lot of other six volt systems look pretty similar to this. A lot of the variation that you probably find would be an ignition switch and maybe how many outputs there are. But the core premise is still gonna be the same. Just like everything else Japanese from the era, everything happens in this ignition switch. So obviously there's wires that are missing that go from here on the diagram. Uh, we only really care about what happens between the magneto, the switch, the battery, and the headlights. That's what all we really care about. Uh, everything else is gonna remain unmodified. Next part to note, very, very important, is that 
the ignition system runs on its own separate coil and we do not have to modify this. You will need to verify if this is true by studying your wiring diagram for your motorcycle. An easy test is if your vintage bike can run without a battery installed, proving it's running directly off the magneto. Then you will most likely not have to make any ignition modifications. Otherwise, you will have to look into getting 12 volt ignition coils and wiring them inappropriately. The only things that we have to modify are going to be the lighting coil and the charge coils. Very similar to other bikes from the era, we have a specific coil for the headlight and then we have a specific one for the charging. Through the table that we see here, we can see how these actually interact with each other. These actually run all of the power through the ignition switch. This ignition switch is going to be the lifeblood of the entire system here because it dictates where the power is actually distributed based off of if it's off, day, or in night position. An important thing to note is that the day and the night position dictates if this headlight is on. Back in the 70s, there were no requirements to actually keep headlights on at all times, so that headlight was only on in night mode. Why I've not verified this myself because when I took everything apart and started doing this, the bike was in pieces and not running. So you can kind of assume that the output for the headlight here is gonna be different than just the charge coils. So important thing to know, how does this even work to convert to six volts and DC power if these are both AC outputs? Well, we can actually look here in the table and we'll see that in day mode, we connect terminal three to terminal four and we get to this, to this blue and white wire here. And it goes to this rectifier. This rectifier is actually a diode. It converts from AC voltage to DC voltage by just stopping voltage going back. That's all it does. It only lets it go forward into the battery. That's all this rectifier is, is a simple diode. So what we're gonna be doing instead is we're gonna be using this four pin voltage regulator and rectifier to convert two AC inputs, the yellow and the pink, and then connect to our battery and then connect to ground. We no longer are gonna be using this blue and white wire output number four. That's no longer going to be used. And we're going to be stopping one of these wires and then connecting two of them to the regulator. So we'll stop that right there. And then we'll connect to our, our regulator where we have a ground. We have first input, second input, and then battery. That's going to be our voltage regulator. Now, what are we going to do about the headlight? We also don't want to keep running this because we need 12 volt power. We have a 12 volt headlight, that original one is six volts, it also burns out. What do we do about this guy? Well, we're not using him anymore, but what we are instead going to do is actually use a relay. So if I come over here, we will add a relay. We'll have a four pin relay. Uh, any four pin relay that is normally open will work. You don't want normally closed because when the bike is off, then your headlights will be on. One of these goes to ground. That will go here to the input signal. So we will take a battery connection, plop it here, and into switched output here. So we're no longer using number six. This will allow us to actually continue using the ignition switch as the main source of truth for when we actually want everything powered. We will have a relay that is going to be using the full battery power, 12 volts, directly to the high and low switch, bypassing this ignition switch. And this also makes it more reliable because we're not running straight up all battery voltage through this switch and overloading it. This is going to be the more correct way to do it. So we no longer use this blue and we no longer use the yellow. And this red, this is what our new 12 volt circuit is gonna look like. Enough theory, here's how we're going to apply it. From the stator, we're keeping the black wire for ignition untouched. And then we're using the light blue and pink as our AC source into the voltage regulator. Yellow is direct power to the headlight, which is no longer being used. And the green is a neutral safety switch, which we are obviously still keeping. 
On the main wiring harness, these connectors are just no longer being used, and in their place is going to be the new voltage regulator, so these can just be safely tucked away. The red wire received power from the ignition switch when in night mode, but it will now get direct 12 volt power from a relay rather than the ignition switch. So this is a lot better of a solution than running full headlight battery voltage through the switch directly. The original rectifier, blue white and white wire are no longer being used. Instead, we'll run the rectified output from the regulator to the brown and white wire, which connects to the battery and then also it feeds power to the main ignition switch. And here, the flasher is just plug and play. This just gets replaced with an LED compatible 12 volt unit. Now we can go ahead and start building the sub harness to connect everything together. To make sure that I don't hack up any wiring and become a dreaded previous owner, we can have all of our modifications be reversible by using this terminal kit from Vintage Connections. I reached out to them about this project and they wanted to support it and send out their CK2 kit which has everything we need to do this wiring job correctly. This Kawasaki uses four millimeter bullet connectors, so everything quite literally becomes plug and play. Using their crimping tool, we can get solid connections that won't break or vibrate loose over time. And I've personally used their kits before on our Suzuki GS750 project and our Dawson 280Z, and it's seriously been a lifesaver. If you don't want to hack up your wiring on your vintage project, you can get 10% off your entire order by using the code DDG10. For the relay, I'm using an extra 4-pin normally open relay from my 300ZX. This relay is actually a headlight relay, so it can definitely handle the single 35 watt bulb we'll be using. This is also where I'm splicing into the brown wire for the relay signal, and is the most invasive maneuver on this whole conversion process. I'm surprised to see that the original harness uses soldered splices because normally manufacturers use crimps, like I've run into on my 280Z and 300ZX. So I'm just going to solder in our signal wire, but this is also totally easily reversible. I've unwrapped this harness because I still needed to make a few repairs and replace a few completely roached connectors with new ones from our kit. So we'll go ahead and rewrap the harness and start tidying everything up, getting ready to test and see if any of this actually works. Now I've got to figure out how to securely mount the battery. I actually learned that AGM batteries can be mounted in any direction, which is great for me because the new 12 volt battery is physically larger than the old 6 volt unit and fits vertically between the frame and the original oil tank. Rather than fabricating an entirely new battery box, I've gone ahead and just lightly modified the old one to fit the new battery. Fits, although we'll get rid of that. I've also gone ahead and fabricated a tab to mount the relay to the battery box and riveted it to the box to give it an OEM-like look, which I think looks really good. After a quick coat of paint, the battery is securely mounted in the original location with our relay and flasher both easily accessible. For the headlight, I've gone ahead and purchased a 5 and 3 quarter inch housing that accepts standard H4 style bulbs. Now we have a large range of bulb and wattage types to choose from and can easily replace them. For now, these 35 watt bulbs were cheap and we'll see if the charging okay. system can keep up. Yep, there we go. We got light. The new light is too large for the old bucket, so I've bought a new one meant for the new light. Only issue is it doesn't fit. Some light modifications were needed, but nothing permanent to the bike, just the mounting brackets that it came with, so hopefully I don't have to return yeah, it. Look at that. With the headlight sorted, everything else falls into place, and it's quite simply just plug and play. New bulbs for the signals, taillight, gauge cluster, and in this case, new rear that. turn signals, all together because they were missing, and along with the new 12 volt horn, and we can call it done. All of the new bulbs were LEDs, and this is to help minimize the amount of draw on the electrical system. Last thing to check is that everything actually works and it's actually charging. We get about 13 volts when we're in the higher RPM ranges where the magneto is spinning faster and producing more electricity, but that still seems a little low. Here just idling we can see that all the lights function as they should. We have a working headlight with both low and high beam, tail light, brake light, and turn signals. All this means is we're ready for our first test ride, which overall went well. And there's a complete video on everything done to this bike to reach this point as well in the description, but everything was going smoothly until about 30 minutes after the battery drained itself. The headlight was simply too much for the charging system to handle. 
a quick swap going from that 35 watt halogen to a 25 watt LED and the charging system can finally keep up and everything is happy and battery was fully charged when we stopped. If you found this helpful and enjoy vintage motorcycles, subscribe and check out our channel where we rescued other barn finds and check out the full video on this Kawasaki G5 and what it took to get it on the road. Thanks for watching.